Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, Crafty Family, it's me. And today we are going to do something really fun. Um, we are going to make embellishments like these glossy, glittery, fun embellishments using UV gel nail polish and a UV light. And these are, remember I made the shrinky dinks? And these are them coated with UV polish. Um, these are amazing and fun. And what you need is you need to have a UV or gel. No, the, uh, it's the nail polish, the top coat, but make sure it's the kind that says no wipe. Otherwise you're going to have to buy something additional to wipe a coating off of it at the end. You know, like if you've ever gotten your nails done with gel nail polish, um, let me turn off the autofocus here for a minute. If you ever gotten your nails done with gel polish, you know how they wipe them off after you get them done or whatever or between coats. And it, they use something called the dehydrator and it wipes off and gets rid of any kind of residue. Well, this is the kind that doesn't have that residue. So it's called the no wipe top coat. Um, and you'll need this because it's much easier to use that. However, do not buy this from Sally's or Walmart or anywhere else other than Amazon because it is so expensive at Walmart. Well, not at Walmart as much, but at, at Sally's, it was $15, first of all, for the no wipe kind. And second of all, the bottle is so, and this is from, this is from Walmart and it was $5 and the bottle is teensy tiny. Whereas the one that I had gotten online that I used, used all up already, um, is double the size and it was the same price. So don't buy it from, uh, unless you have a cosmetology license and you can get it from a beauty supply. Yeah. Don't buy it from sally's or walmart or in a store um get it on amazon is cheaper or there are probably other places online to get it cheaper because i had a big bottle because you'll blow through it doing lots of embellishments and i'm going to show you an alternative at the end so basically i'm going to show you or not at the end but i'm going to explain how you don't even really need this necessarily um, if you already have a gel top coat and you also need the UV light machine that you put your hand in, that kind of thing, one of these doohickeys, you need one of these, preferably with a pull-out base that slides out. It would be easier to put your things in. So you do need one of those. Um, and if you already have this at home for your nails and you already have a top coat and you already have the machine, then this would be worth doing this. If you don't already have this um obviously need the machine and it's about thirty dollars you can get it on amazon mine is melody susie and it was given to me by or bought for me by kathy my friend kathy got it for me uh, melody susie it's about 27 dollars on amazon it works perfectly fine you don't need nothing else um but basically what this is is basically a uv resin in a nail polish form it's uv resin which is cured by putting it under the uv light or if you go out in the sun you can cure everything there too but it takes a little longer this is a little easier um and don't mind my voice it's very very almost gone um so if you aren't sure if you want to or if you don't think you're going to do many large pieces or you're just going to do a few embellishments and you just want to add a top coat, then you could get yourself a bottle of the nail polish. Like I said, though, get it on Amazon and do it that way if you want to. But what I advise you to do is skip getting the gel nail polish and get a UV resin. 
because on Amazon for about $24, you can get a 200 gram bottle, which is over seven ounces. And that would be a very large bottle. Um, I don't know how many ounces it would be. Uh, I'm trying to find an eight ounce container so I can show you what seven ounces looks like. Um, I don't know. It's about probably since these are two ounce, so it's probably that would be four. This would be six. So add another ounce and it's this much plus another ounce plus another half a bottle. That's seven ounces, which is way more than this teeny tiny thing. And yet it may cost $20, but that's going to last you a hell of a lot longer. Um, you may want to have both. A nail polish and the UV resin because the nail polish is a bit thinner good for putting you know thinner coats on things and the resins thicker um, while you can brush it on it's probably easier to brush this on so it might work to have both to use the resin for your molds and to use the nail polish for brushing I don't know or you could put some of the resin in like a, in, a, in a nail polish bottle as long as it's dark because like I said this cures by sunlight or even your like lamps over your desk could potentially start to cure it it won't probably cure it all the way but what I mean is it'll start to kind of get weird so you want to make it it won't cure it cure it but that's why like you want to keep it in a dark bottle and whenever you get UV resin or UV, UV nail polish or gel polish which is basically UV resin um, it's in a dark bottle so I'm hoping that made sense um, but these embellishments are amazing. And some people might say, well, you know, I can just use glossy accents or I can just use UD, ultra thick embossing enamel, enamel. Yeah, you could. However, this is going to be better. It's going to be a little more flexible. It's going to dry quicker, obviously, because it only dries in literally a couple of minutes. Whereas if you put a nice thick layer of glossy accents, you're talking 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours. Um, regular two-part resin, which UV resin is not two-part. It is just one bottle, obviously, in nail polish form or the UV resin in a bottle. It's one bottle, so you don't have to mix anything. Um, but regular resin that is two parts, that doesn't use a UV lamp, the kind that you just sit out, that takes 12 hours. UD dries kind of clear. However, you have to keep doing coats and keep doing coats and it's messy and it's annoying and, you know, it can get over the edges and, you know, it's hard to pick up your pieces and try to get, you have to use the embossing and, um, you know, the, the stuff, the embossing ink, you have to use that every time and it's kind of a pain in the ass and it also does not dry as crystal clear as this. There is a big difference. And I wish I had a piece. I had a piece last night that I was showing, but I don't know what happened to it um, in my live stream because I did all this in my Patreon live stream last night. But um, I had a piece of something I put UD on and I don't know what happened to it now. But UD is cloudier and more smudgy looking and not flexible. So if you even bend UD a little bit after it's cured, you're going to crack. You're going to put a giant crack in it. And that's what I was showing last night because I had one that was cracked. I don't know what happened to it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of advantages to this, a ton of advantages to this and a lot of disadvantages to UD or glossy accents, triple thick, any diamond glaze. Those are all pretty much the same thing. This is better than all of that. Guaranteed. Once you do this, you're never going to want to do anything else. I guarantee it. I, I can't speak it highly enough about this and how beautiful it looks and how easy it is. And the look, I've, I've been doing crafts a long time and I've used every type of gloss finish there is, every type of varnish, every type of triple thick, diamond glaze, Judy Kins this, whatever, whatever. I've used it all. This is better. This is like resin because it is resin. So it's resin. It's just a different type of resin. So you know how you can't match the way resin. And when I say resin, I mean the two-part resin that you mix. You see everybody use. This is basically what this is, but without the two parts, without the 12-hour driving drying time, without the mess, and it's just easier. 
Um, but I'm telling you, once you do this, you will you will never go back to glossy accents again. Um, and I'm going to show you. See, and these are just some uh, mixed media mashups that I tile that I cut into tiles. You know how I sometimes do the mosaics with these? Well, I decided to do some with a gloss finish, and it's really cool. It's just really cool. I did some feathers and I put glitter in it and everything. Oh, and you can color this. Um, I'll show you that a little bit. I'm also going to do another video in a couple days on the resin and show you how to do it with molds right in here, how to do it in molds, how to do all kinds of things with the actual resin. Fill bezels. I'll show you how to do that with the resin. I'm not going to do, I did it with the polish last night because you can do this with the polish, but um, you'll waste a lot of polish. Um, I would get the gel or the UV resin, but look, it looks like it was resined and I put glitter over it. So it's like a vintage picture and my autofocus is off right now. So let's see if it'll work. So, but look at it, it's like glass. It's perfect. So that's the scoop. Um, so we're going to work with this and have some fun. I'm going to move these embellishments over that I've already done and we're going to do some. So we're going to start out with making one of these types that I made out of watercolor. Now, when I first did it, um, I thought that I had to spray my watercolor sheet with something because I thought maybe putting the polish on was going to make it run because this is brushos. I use brushos, you know, the powdered watercolor. And if you use water on it or anything water-based, obviously it'll activate the watercolor. And so I had sprayed this, but then I found out later when I made, I'll show, oh, I need to show you the other things I made. I found out later when I made Hold on. These couple of cards. I had done these with watercolor. You know how I did the alcohol ink flowers a while back? Well, I, try, I had tried them a while ago with watercolor and blew through a straw and did the watercolor like that. Well, I went back with the nail polish and I did not spray it first. I just went over it with this and then cured it and put some sparkle in it too. And it did not smear my watercolor. So you do not need to spray your watercolor. It will not smear it, which is surprised me. So I had already sprayed this because I did this before I did that. Um, so I didn't even have to spray this with a spray. So you don't have to, you could just watercolor and then punch it out or whatever you want to do. So we'll do a star. This is already watercolored. I'm just gonna get a star and punch it out. You don't, you know, you can use acrylic. You can do it over acrylic paint, watercolors, markers, whatever you want. Do it over whatever you want. It doesn't have to be watercolor. I just thought the watercolor looked pretty on these. And, you know, when it's shiny, it looks real nice. Um, and all you're going to do now, if you want sparkle on it, you don't have to put sparkle. I have this in my store and this is what I used in all of these which is really pretty when you use it with this. It's so pretty. You can't see online as pretty. I'm telling you right now, like I was trying to explain last night, they look so much better in person. I cannot pick up on camera how beautiful they look. You just can't. You have to do it for yourself to see. I mean, they look pretty on camera, but it's just, I don't know. I can't, let me see if I can get this to focus. I can't explain how beautiful that glitter looks in there. It's so reflective. It really doesn't, it shows up so much more in person. It doesn't pick up the tiny little glitters that are in there. Like, trust me. And this is in my Zibit store. I'll put the, uh, the link to my Zibit store is below. I'm also going to put a link to where you can get everything you need. Even the resin, the nail polish, the machine. There'll be links below to get them below the video in the description. So look below for that. But I'm going to show you how to do it with the glitter. And we're going to 
do that. It's very easy. So you take your polish. You don't have to mix it or anything. You take your polish and you basically polish. I need my glasses. Where are they? No. Oh, they're over here. You just polish it like you would, like you would your nails or whatever. You just coat it. And you can put a nice, you know, decently thick coat on. It doesn't have to be super thin. You know, like on your nails, you would normally do like a couple of thin coats. Well, I like to do it a little thicker. This one, this polish is a little thicker than the one I used yesterday, actually. But yeah, like I said, you, you probably better value would be to just get the UV resin because it comes in a bigger bottle because you will, you will plow. I promise you'll, you'll have so much fun doing this. You will plow through this, this nail polish bottle is so tiny, by the way, it's ridiculous. I'll probably get a couple of embellishments out of it and then pff, that's about it. Because, you know, we're laying it on thick. It's not like you're doing your nails. And you just want to look at it in the light and make sure there's no major air bubbles. You could take a little lighter and go over it and it'll get any air bubbles out as well. So if you had air bubbles, you could take um, a lighter like this and just kind of careful your fingers and just kind of go over it and then move it. And this will get any air bubbles out. So then I'm going to lay it on a piece of scrap paper. And I'm going to take some of this glitter and I'm going to put the glitter in it. Just going to pinch, just take some pinches and sprinkle it around. This glitter's got a couple of different sizes of glitter in it. And it's really, really, really pretty and iridescent. It's like super iridescent and pretty. Looks good to me. And now all we're going to do is put this on the tray like so and slide it in. Now, one thing to know about this machine that I learned after using it for hours last night, I realized my eyes were hurting because I, you're not supposed to let this light or be looking into this light. And I was stupidly looking into it all night, not realizing because it is a UV light. So my eyes were hurting after I did that last night, like really bad. I actually had a headache. So you want to turn it away from you like this so that you're just not looking at it and turn it on and then hit the button in the back. There's a couple of different settings. You could set it to be on 30 minutes. You could set it to be on 180 seconds or 120 seconds. I put it on 180 seconds and then check it. And then there's a little start button. Oh, wait, I didn't turn it on, did I? I turned it off. There we go. So now it's on. You can see the light reflecting off of things right here, that purple light right there. So you just let it sit. Let it sit for the 180 seconds while we move on to another thing. So we'll prepare another one while we're waiting. Um, here, I have this snowflake. It's a little die cut and it's cut out of what seems like a very, um, thin paper. So what we're going to do is try to do this carefully because I want to put some glitter on it and hopefully I might need tweezers for this one or some sort of something to pick it up with. Like maybe these or something. I might, well, I don't know. I need something because it's so thin. Well, if I need it, but we'll try to do it without. If I, if I have to do half at a time, it's no big deal, but I'm just going to throw some polish over this and it's okay if you get it on your table or whatever, because it's not going to really dry there. So a baby wipe will pick it up. So don't fret. It's not like nail polish or whatever, you know. You also don't want to leave your bottle or your brush in front of or anywhere near the front of your machine because it will 
start to harden it because it's close enough to the machine that it's likely going to harden it. All right, I'm going to attempt to pick this up now. Little things like this are kind of hard to do, but and then I'm going to grab a baby wipe and it won't really harden very, like, like I said, it, you know, if you left it sit out long enough, it'll start to kind of get like tacky hard under your desk lamps, depending on what, if you have like LED lamps, it will. So, you know, but it'll be tacky enough for a little while, obviously, to put your glitters on and whatnot. So I'm trying to put some glitter on here. Um, and now I'm going to put this in with the star. I'll just leave it in longer when I get the star out. And that's finished. I'm going to hit the start button again. Let's see. Is it done? Yep. So that's one coat and then the glitter on that. But you can see that the glitter is like, you know, of course, because it's kind of a chunky, not, it's not super chunky, but it's a chunkier glitter. So now you'd want to put a second coat to get it more smooth. Let me get this glitter where I can back into the thing. Because I only left myself one of these little tubs and I know that I'm going to use the crap out of this. Especially around Christmas and stuff and for this stuff, I really like it. And it's in my store and I think it's like under, under $2. I think it's like a dollar something. So, and I only have 12, I only think I have 12 of them and I might even only have 11 because I think I might have like 10 actually. All right. So now we're going to polish it again and then just, I'm going to stick it right back under there while that one's going. I usually, when I'm doing a lot of stuff, I'll put it on the 30 minute mode. This way I could just put stuff in and out. So I don't have to keep hitting the button on the back. But like I said, just keep it pointed away from your eyes. Or you can fasten a little like foil piece that you can make a little cover on the front of it. Just so it'll be more reflection on the inside too. But it'll also protect you from your eyes because anything that reflects off of like a glass table or whatever can still hurt your eyes. So and they do like some of the resins that you buy will come with the uh, UV little glasses you can get. And some of the resin that you buy will come with it, little glasses, so that you don't hurt your eyes. Which I learned my lesson yesterday because I don't know if I did any damage to my eyes. But I just really wasn't thinking about it. And I should have because, I mean, I'm not stupid. I should have realized that that was probably going to be hurting my eyes. Um, for some reason, I just didn't think of it. And I'm sitting there staring into it and like, you know, doing stupid things. So hopefully I didn't permanently do any damage in that. I mean, because my eyes don't feel as bad as they did last night, but they were hurting last night. I had like a headache. So you don't want to be, you know, and if you have kids or whatever, they don't need to be around it or looking into it. So, okay, I'm going to put that in now. And then, um, let's see how this is doing. Perfect. And you'll know it's done. Not basically, you can't say, well, how long does it take? It just, it'll feel, it won't feel tacky, you know, or sticky in any way. That's how you know. Um, I'm just going to put it on the 30 minute one. Um, it'll just, you know, like I usually put it, you can leave it in for a long time too. Don't feel like you have to, oh, I have to get it out. No, I, sometimes you can just leave it go while you're doing other things. You know what I mean? So I'm going to put a second coat on this now that I've got the first coat on and some glitter. It's a little stiffer now, but don't feel like, you know, you can't leave it in because you can leave it in, you know, while you're doing other things, you know, obviously you don't want to leave it on all day because it's going to run up your electric bill. But what I mean is like, you know, if you leave it in for five, 10 minutes or even more or whatever, you're not going to hurt anything. Um, but it, it'll cure within like probably a minute and a half if you're just doing thin coats like this. 
if you do obviously the thicker you do the longer it's going to take so you know just keep that in mind so if you pull it out and touch it and it seems tacky well then obviously you know you have to put it back in i might just do everything but what i'm holding and then go back and do what i'm holding the part that i'm holding because i don't want to attempt to screw up what i got here so i'll just go back to that i'll just make it the one that's right on the edge there so i know which one it is and then i can hold it from the other side so cool right easy breezy and now i've got this embellishment this is like a die cut that somebody made for me and it's like pieced together so it's got like some layered pieces i wanted to try it put a little glitter on it too i love putting the glitter on things the glitter just is awesome so you can just you know slap it on there it'll pretty much self level itself as long as you don't put on like a super thin coat it'll level out so you're not going to have brush strokes you know, it's kind of like when you, you know, if you've ever had your nails done with gel polish, it's like, you know, you don't, you don't have any brush strokes afterwards or whatever. It kind of levels itself out. But I know people are going to ask me the question, well, you know, what, what, what can you, what can you resin with it? You know, what, what can you use it on? You can use it on anything. You can use this on anything. You can use it on metal can use it i believe you can use it on glass even you can use it on paper wood plastic over fabric which we're going to do in a second anything that this will apply to you can resin i'm going to say resin even though this is like gel polish but it is basically all it is is just a resin <laughs> it's just uv resin they use for nails but you can use this on anything and if you're not sure of something then try it you're not gonna hurt anything i mean unless it's something super expensive you know what i mean but you know give it a try that's all i have to say you're not gonna hurt anything you're not gonna explode anything you're not gonna blow anything up you know give it a try when in doubt try it out that's what i say All right, so I put my glitter on because I love the glitter. <laughs> I usually put, run my hand along the side because you know some of the glitter pieces, will, if they're larger ones, they'll stick off the side. So that's it before I before it cures. Now I could take my star out. I think my star is done. Let's see, is it sticky? Nope, it's perfect. And so there's my star. Now it's got the glitter, and now it's much smoother. If I can get it to reflect see it's much smoother in the light because it's got the other coat over top of the chunkier glitter which i can't seem to get it to reflect there you go but it's really really pretty and you can put like a word on it you can you know just use it as an embellishment do whatever you want with it you can even do the back side um or adhere cut another star out and adhere it to the back side and resin the back side and make a pendant out of this and put a hole in it and voila you've got a plastic you know pendant um so yeah you could totally do all kinds of like i'm telling you the sky is the limit and you guys are going to have so much fun with this and I, i'm considering all you could do with it it's not an expensive craft i don't feel um Considering this is 30 bucks and the resin is 25. So 55 bucks and you can have all the fun in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely worth it because there's not many things nowadays that you can get that much pleasure out of for that little money. So let's do, um, I've got this, this is a black skeleton leaf. And it's, I want to, I haven't tried it over this yet, but I want to give it a try and see how that turns out in the thing. 
probably take my snowflake out. Let me do that and turn it around. Yeah, and let me do this little end here that I didn't do before so that I can put it back in there for just a minute. It's just that little end that I didn't, that I was holding it by. And that might be done. Yeah, that's done. So we'll put another coat on there so that it covers up the glitter well. I got two bottles of it because I had a feeling today. So I, I'm pissed that I had to spend $10 over, you know, $10 on this polish to get enough to do the video today. But I really wanted to do this video today because then I want to do the resin video when I get the resin in. Um, so I was annoyed that because I used up what happened was I thought I had bought two bottles of I thought that was a two pack of polish the one that I used up last night and so I was using it up not caring just having a good time and I thought well I have another bottle so I have plenty to do my video tomorrow because like I said I did I played around and learned what I needed to learn during a live stream which if you're not one of my patrons for one dollar a month you get to be in my live streams and sometimes you get to see things that I do way earlier than anybody else because I do them in my live streams and it's only for people that are in my patron. So all of them got to see all this already and ask all kinds of questions and whatnot and be a part of it. So we'll put that back in now. That's that second coat on that sucker there. Um, but anyway, so I thought I was buying two of the top coats. Well, unfortunately, I got finished with this bottle, went to open the other bottle, used it thinking it was the same thing, didn't see that it said foundation, and tried to use it on something and it wouldn't cure because you're supposed to put it on, cure it, you know, put it on thin, cure it, and then put this on top. Well, my dumbass was putting it on real thick on things, thinking it was going to cure just like the polish. And it was, and then I looked at the, and it wouldn't cure it. I'm like, what's going on? So then I looked at the, I looked at the bottle and I went, son of a bitch. I was so mad because I knew that I wanted to do the video and now I couldn't, you know, and I'm even going to put glitter on this too. So we're going to put this on. It's obviously going to go through the leaf. So we're going to see how this comes out because it might get stuck to my thing. I'm not sure. I may have to do something about that. I may have to hold it. I may have to hold this specifically in there, if that makes sense. I can hold it in there with my fingers or with a thing. Um, I don't necessarily have to lay it down. And like I said, you could do layers and layers and layers. So don't feel like you have to do it all at once because it will it won't leave a line if you do like one layer and then do another layer. So I'm going to hold this and see what happens. Well, I know what's going to happen. First, let me clean my finger off because I don't want resin to cure on my finger. Or I can just hold it with this. All right, I'm going to hold that in there and kind of hold it up a minute. Just to get it to cure enough so that if I lay it down, it doesn't stick to my thing. I mean, it'll come off the thing, but I didn't want to take chances. Still sticky. I should be able to lay it down though now. And it shouldn't stick. Okay, so then we'll do the other half. That's probably going to need like certain amount of layers to it. Okay. Yeah, see like I'm already like more than halfway through that bottle probably. So then I did this clay thing a while ago. And I had put like a weird top coat on it. But it like, it has like a weird... I don't know. I never liked the feeling of it. So I tried to wipe it off 
Um, but anyway, this is a clay, like kind of a relic piece that I made where I just texturized it and added some gold to it. But I want it to have more of a shiny finish. So I'm going to add some of this to it and stick it in because, yes, you can do this over clay. Obviously, it needs to be hardened clay. So whether it's sculpy and you bake it or it's air dry and you let it dry, but you can't do it over wet clay. Yeah, it sucks that these bottles are so tiny and they're so expensive. I wish I could have. I won't get my, my resin until Tuesday. I'm like dying to get it because I really, really wanted to do play with it. But I have to be patient. I have to wait. I don't like being patient, especially when it's something I really, really want to play with. Okay, that's coated. Put that in. See, now I still have those other pieces in there, which are well done, but who cares? You know, they've been done for a while, but it's not like it's going to hurt them. So let's see. We're going to pull out the snowflake because that's done. We're going to pull out our little Russian stacking doll, and this should be done as well. And it is. That just needs to finish. Um. Oh, yeah, it looks cool. It just needs more coats, and it needs to be. Like, obviously, it's a little uneven because, it, you know, some parts it's sunk in. So I probably have to do the back, too. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this side of the front now where I was holding it before and see uh, what I can get on there. I can't believe how quickly I'm going through this bottle. There was, I don't think that it was very full, to be quite honest because there's no way i mean i haven't even done very much i've only done what you saw me do and it couldn't have possibly used it up that fast where's my little thing at i don't know i had a thing that i was using to tip the bottle but If you have a lot of air bubbles. Get them to kind of go away. And then I'll use this. I will hold it in there and then I'll lay it down once it's kind of cured a bit. I bet you that's going to look cool though. But you could do this over lots of stuff. I should be able to lay it down safely now. Okay. But yeah, these came out really cool. My snowflake looks awesome. It's glittery and shiny and pretty. And then my little Russian stacking doll. And I could put more coats over it. I'm not going to. But I would probably put another one or two coats over this because it's got layers to it with the paper pieces. You'd want to probably coat it a few more times. Um, but I want to do some other things and I don't want to use up the whole, I, I don't care if I use up the whole one bottle, but because I do have another bottle. Um, also, I did those little charms. Um, I was showing you earlier the little, these are the shrinky dink charms that I made. And I coated them with resin and they're like, got like a glass like finish. And even with it on here, it's not going to hurt anything to do it. I'm not pulling these off, but I do want to put a shine on them. I need to fasten my little bottle the way, oh, here it is. I had this little setup last night so I can get my bottle to sit sideways. I know they sell little things that do that too. But after Tuesday, I'm not going to be probably having to deal with nail polish bottles. Or maybe I will. Maybe I'll put some of the resin in, in nail polish bottles so that it's, I don't know, easier to apply maybe. I don't know.
Now it will act as a glue as well. So when I do this, it may stick to the metal jump ring that's that's on it, which is fine because um, I'll be able to unpry that. But you can use it as a glue, especially the resin. All right, come on, get in there. Where is the lighter? I'm just going to give it a quick little... And I'm going to stick it in there, just in the inner edge there, just to let it cure. Um, yeah, you could stick it to metal. Oh, I'll show you how um, to do that. I need a piece of chain. Also, you could do dominoes. I started a domino here. I glued the paper on. This is where I figured out that I had the wrong bottle because I was going to do the dominoes last night and I already got, I had glued down the picture to the domino and I was going to trim it and then do the thing and the thing and the thing. And then of course I realized I had no resin left or no, no, um, polish left to do it. And I was pissed, very pissed because I was having a ball. I was up till, you know, five o'clock in the morning playing with this from like eight o'clock at night till five o'clock in the morning. This is all I did. I was having such a blast I'm telling you when you do it, you'll be like, you'll be doing everything. You'll be like, Ooh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to show you some real cool things when I get the resin in. So I just cut it away. And then if it seems like it's got a wonky edge to it, you can take a nail file. Which I have one here somewhere oh, here. And you can kind of file the edges downward from the top down, not up and down like this on it, just one way going with the domino kind of, you can go kind of sideways, but as long as you're going in a downward motion and it'll basically sand down the edges of the picture so that it blends into the domino a little better and take off any ragged edges. And it'll smooth it out. And I'll show you something cool as well as far as connecting the bale to the domino. You know how usually you'd have to put the bale on with E6000? You could put it on with the gel. I don't see, I haven't done it with the polish, but I know you could do it with the resin because I watched videos on it. And by the way, this is not my idea. It's on it's it's on YouTube, people using the polish to do stuff. But also Kathy's the one that told me about it. So I didn't know about it until Kathy said something. And, and she has she does it. Um and it and then after she did it, I looked it up online because I always like to look it up and make sure, you know, see if other people have done it. And there are a couple people that use the nail polish. Most people use the resin though. But some people, if you already got the polish, you know, it just makes sense to, you might as well use it if you can. Just smoothing everything out. Okay, I'm gonna wipe up my sawdust, paper dust. And then, now you could do a couple different things in this situation. If you don't wanna put glitter all over the whole thing, um, you can use stickles or Winkastella would be quicker. Um, but I'm thinking if I do a thin stickle glue, it'll be fine. It'll glue quickly because I want to use this pink. Actually, do I want to use pink? No, let me use the clear. Use the clear. 
Um, but I'm going to put it on thinly so that by the time we're done with the rest of the things we're doing, I could put this, I could put the stuff over it. This will be dry because you want to wait for this to be dry. You don't want to put it over wet stickles. It won't take long to dry because I'm not putting it on super thick. You can also use Winkostella, which would dry pretty quickly, quicker than this. And you can obviously do it over that as well. And pretty much anything you can think of, you could do this over. So before you ask me, well, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Just try it. You most likely can. I can't really think of much that you can't do this over. Even all, even two part resin pieces, you can put another layer over with this stuff and use the, either the nail polish or the UV resin to cover it. So it's really, it doesn't matter. So I can hit this with the heat gun for a second and then let it sit for a little while. All right, I'll, now I jump started it. Now I'll let it sit for a while and we'll move on to a piece of fabric because I also wanted to do a little applique and see what happens when we do that. This I have not done yet. I know it'll work. I know it'll work because I've seen people do it with the resin. Um, let's see how our charms are doing here first off. The charm is all done. And it's still on its little thing. It didn't do anything to it. Now it's all glossy. So I'm probably going to do that to all my charms that are on here. The, the ones that are the plastic ones. But I'm not going to do it right now. Here's my clay piece. It probably needs another coat, but look how nice and glossy that is. So I'll probably put another coat on that. And then we have our leaf, which needs more coats, but it's starting to look really cool. It's starting to look really glassy, which is awesome. I don't think we have anything else in there right now. So I may go, now I should be able to do the front of the leaf and just lay it down because it's not going to go through anymore because at least it's got that on there. So I should just be able to do that now and just do coats and then I'll do the back side. And I'll be able to put a layer of glitter at some point too. Like I might put glitter on this layer actually. Now I can hold it by the sides because it's not going to bend. Because before, obviously, it was so thin it just would crumble in my hands. All right, where's my little paper? some glitter on this sucker. You can use any kind of glitter you want as long as it's a dry glitter. Can you use this over top of already hardened UD? Yes. Like ultra thick embossing enamel or any embossing enamel? Yes. Because I did that last night. I just can't find the piece. Um, oh, that's right. That was the piece that I accidentally use the other stuff on. So that's got the glitter on it. We're going to pop that in, let that set. I'm just going to leave that over here. All right, now we're going to do our fabric piece, which again, this is going to be hard. So I'll probably do part of it, uh, cure it, then do the other part, cure it so that it gets harder as I go, because it's going to be a little harder to do even than the skeleton leaf. So I'm just going to do like layers on this. So I'll do like thinner layers if I have to. I'm not going to try to do it like super thick. So I'm just going to do the bottom three little flowers and then I'm going to put it in. Yeah, probably better off with something fabric to do layers, thin layers, rather than try to put it on real thick like you would paper or plastic or something like that. Thinner layers will probably be better because you can do as many layers as you, your heart desires. Not really a big deal. 
And obviously it's going to seep into the fabric. So your your the first layer is going to pretty much look useless because it's going to seep in. So I'm going to stick it under and let it do its thing. So the first layer is going to pretty much just disappear and seep into the thing. So it's not going to look that great until we put a few layers on. I could probably put um, another coat on that clay piece while we're waiting. Because if we want it to be done all the way and have it more glassy looking, I'm really running out of this stuff. I really feel that they didn't fill this bottle up because even with it being small, it, there should have been like, even when the first time I ever dipped into it, it didn't feel like it was full. So this is like kind of a rip off this stuff from Walmart. It's, I don't know what brand it is, but it's a ripoff, is all I'm saying. Definitely get it on Amazon or somewhere else where you can get a big bottle. Because these little tiny bottles are stupid. But like I said, you're better off for the money spending the 20 bucks and getting resin. And you can get smaller amounts of resin. You don't have to get the $25 one like I did. You can get like 100 grams instead of 200 grams and start out like that. And it's like $15. All right, let's see where we're at with the leaf. I think we're good enough to start the other side of that, maybe. Wow, that looks so freaking cool. And it's never going to show up on camera how cool that looks. Let me see. I don't know. No, it's never going to show the proper reflection. Like if you saw it in person, you'd be like, that's so cool. It looks really cool. I'm going to do the back side to smooth that out. Yeah, I think I'll do more of these leaves for sure, especially for Christmas. These would be amazing for Christmas. And the, gl the glitter shows through to the back from the front. That's so cool. Cool. All right. Is this domino dry enough? Not really. Not quite. I might have just smudged it. That's all right. Not quite. I thought it would be drier by now. Oh, I also have this. I wanted to do this. But first I wanted to show you if I have enough in here. You can color it with some pan pastels or just pastels. Um, because I was going to do the fox. But I'm going to put a layer of clear over top of this. because, um, Or whatever this is. A raccoon. Um, because... It's going to seep in because it's wood. So you want to put like a clear layer first. But this is a little wood die cut. So I'm going to put a layer on it. And then we're going to go back. And I'm going to hopefully have enough in here to make a color. And obviously I'm not going to make him a raccoon color. Because that would be boring. I'm going to do like pink or purple or something sparkly or whatever. I don't know. What fun would it be to have him be raccoon color? You could if you know how to, I just don't even, I don't even remember what colors raccoons are. Black and gray, I think. I don't know. And I have raccoons outside too. So you just tilt it and you can see where you've applied and where it needs more. Paint me the little raccoon.
Let's see where I can where I missed. You just want to make sure you get all your edges because sometimes you'll miss the edges and torch it a little bit. It helps pop the air bubbles on top. Well, it's supposed to. My, mine looks like it's giving me air bubbles. Do that. Well, the resin, I know the resin may pop the air bubbles that way. I looked at it, it looked like it was giving me air bubbles. Well, I don't want that giving me air bubbles. Oh. Maybe it only works with the resin. I don't know. It's fine. Okay, let's check our leaf. Ooh, nice. And now I'm going to do the front again because now I'm going to cover the glitter. So one more coat and we're done. This is crazy that this is so empty. And for Christmas, um, you're, you'll find this to be really useful, I think. For Christmas. Because you could do things like the snowflakes and the and ornaments and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Little bits and bits and bobs and dribbles and drops and all that stuff. Oh, unicorn. Oh, color. I need to do that on the thing. On that wood piece, but it's, I don't think it's ready yet, but let me check the other ones that I got back here. I've got the clay piece, which is done, and I've got the fabric, which is done. Okay. All right, so the fabric is hardened up here. So now I'll start working my way over here. It doesn't look very nice right now because it's only got that one layer that's soaked into it. So we just need to add more now, obviously, and get to the other sections. And it'll soak into the whole thing and then... But after that, we should be able to start seeing it get glassy instead of soaking in. That's it. And we can check on our foxy fox. No, it's not a fox. I keep calling it a damn fox. It's a raccoon. There is a fox in that thing, that <clears throat> package that I got that from. Ooh, this is nice now. Now that's, it could probably use one more coat, but, oh, it's nice. I can't show you how shiny. Beautimous. Ooh, that looks really pretty really pretty it brings out the metallic really nice it's gorgeous love it let's see how our raccoon is doing check and see okay cool he's good all right so now we've got a first coat on there and he's you know shiny 
I'm not going to be able to show you how shiny it is because this thing is not going to let me reflect it in the light. Well, you'll just have to kind of believe me that it is shiny. All right, so in order to make some colors, I'm going to take... Is this the right thing? These are oil pastels. I don't want oil pastels. I want, you want chalk pastels, not oil pastels. Just an FYI. All right, anyway, we've got our... Maybe I'll do fall colors and I can use them on a fall card or something. So what you're going to want to do is take some sort of razor blade thing. Um, I'm trying to find mine. And so if I want to do like a dark orange, a light orange, I'm going to scrape off some pigment from it. As you can see, something right there. Scrape some of that off. And I'll do over here. And you just run it across it lightly. Don't want to take big gouges out of it. And do that. And then... So we could do his tail in the dark orange and around his eyes in the dark orange and his ears and then do the light orange on the rest of them. So we'll just do two, two colors. And what I'm going to do is hopefully get enough of this out on here. And a toothpick. Oh, I've got this thing. I'm just going to... I'm supposed to be able to just mix this in. Now, of course, it's not going to be super opaque. Because oh, it works. However, I'm going to get more. I definitely need more of that color. You want to be careful you don't add too, too much because um, you could end up your resin might not cure very well if you're not careful experiment with it i'm not an expert at this so i'm not the person to necessarily ask about it and then i'm going to take a brush i have paint brushes i'm just going to use for now because you can just clean it off your paintbrush with a little soap and water but um oh that's nice So I'm just going to plop it on there. Like I'm painting it. I'm just going to put it over most of the whole thing and then cure it and then go back and do the darker colors. These cheap pastels don't break down very well, but you can use pigment powder too. But you'll get the point. I'm just kind of picking it up and tapping it on. I'm going to do the tail dark so there's no point. Maybe I should do it two tones, dark and light. I could do like that and then do cute. All 
All right, let's cure this and see what happens. In the meantime, I'll leave this like this and I'll mix up my other color. I might be able to just mix that into there and then add some if I need to. In the meantime, I think our leaf is done. Our leaf is this. Yeah. Ooh, that is pretty. See, you guys can't see how pretty it is. It sucks. You can't see how absolutely iridescent. You can't see any of the iridescence. That's the problem. You can see that it's shiny and you can see it's got glitter, but you can't see how iridescent it is. That is freaking cool. And it's slightly flexible. I mean, if you bent it all the way back, it might crack, but not like Yudi. Yudi, if you just even bent it slightly, it would crack all over the place. That is so cool. I love that. That's so awesome. Let's see how our fabric is doing. Our fabric is nice and hot. Getting there, getting there. So now we'll do another coat on the fabric while we're waiting for that to finish curing. And then I'll throw the glitter on this on this layer. I'm putting it on just a little thicker because now it's not going to really absorb inside of it anymore. It's going to sit on top. So sometimes when you have a porous surface, the rule of thumb is to do one layer of just plain resin to get it, you know, to anything that's going to seep into it you know, don't let it be your good layer, you know, like your layer with your color or your layer with your glitter or whatever. Do it, you know, do plain first so that you don't waste any good stuff. If that makes sense. I don't know if it does or not. This is like it's even seeping in a little bit still. <laughs> Jesus. Thank goodness it just fell flat. It did not like it did not go all over the place. Alright, I'm just gonna sprinkle some glitter on it. Take a pinch of glitter. Stick it in. All right, our raccoon should be done. Let me just get my fingers off of glitter. A raccoon is done enough, I think. Yeah, see? And now he's got his kind of orange layer. And we can even go back in for like a touch up layer on that orange. Because it, in some areas, it might need it. Get it a little darker. Mr. Raccoon, you need a little darker color. And it can also, like, sometimes the dark and light in it can make it look two toned, like he's got some highlight to him. But I'm not interested in that. I just want to see how dark I can get it. Time to cure it again. 
That's all that's in there is the snowflake and the thing, the little dude. Oh, this is fun. I really like this. That'll be good for a Halloween craft. And then if you do different colors, you could do anything. You could even do like a piece of lace. All kind. You can do a piece of fabric. If you have like um, a painty paper, you can add, especially when you get, if you have the resin, you can brush resin over it and cure it. Obviously it has to be as big to fit in here, or you can put it on a tray and put it outside in direct sunlight. It doesn't matter whether it's cold or not. It just needs to be in direct sunny sunlight. Let's see how raccoon's doing. Oh, we can add more now. Now we can add our color in here and then add some more resin to it. A darker color, which we'll probably need more of. Let me grab the dark orange. And I'm likely going to need more. I mean, we don't need that. We only have a few spots to do it in, but. And it's getting tacky because it's sitting under my desk light. So, oops, I got that on my thing. So, like, I could tell, like, it's getting sticky on my desk because it's sitting under the lamps. Like I told you, it will eventually sticky, like, get sticky-ish. <laughs> Cute. Maybe I'll do his little feet. All right. Now we'll throw it in. And let it cure. I'll have some of this left. Not that I can use it on much. I don't think. I don't really have anything to paint orange. <laughs> trying to think. Do I have anything I want to paint on? Oh, I do. I have little hearts I can make on hearts. Since I've got so much of it left over, I don't want to waste it. So I can go in and just scoop it up and plop it on there. These little wooden hearts. They'll make a cute little embellishment. I guess some of that's not breaking down at all. These chalk pastels, you might want to grind them up somehow a little bit because they're not the most nice if you've got cheap ones. <laughs> you may want to keep that in mind because the cheap ones don't want to seem to mash up enough.
Out of there for now, so I can move my hearts. Because we don't want to waste our orangey colored kind of resin stuff. Turning it over isn't going to help our situation at all. I'll do one more, and then I'm done. Because I probably need another coat on the other ones that are already in there. All right, let's check check on Ricky Raccoon. Oh, look how cool. <laughs> He's cute. Isn't he cute? I like him. He's so cute. Any of these done? Yep, this one is. And obviously, you could put as many layers as you want. Or don't put any layers at all. Whatever. Up to you. And like when you're putting thin coats on, it'll dry like in you know 15, 20 seconds. It's the thick coats that take longer to dry. I'm concentrating, can't you tell? Right, there's one more back here that needs another coat. Can I get it? I think I can. I'm breaking up some of the little chalk. On there as I go. Okay, I'm done with this now. <laughs> I'm done with the color. I am done. And it wipes up pretty easily. So, you get the gist of what's going on. We've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes. I wasn't expecting it to be that long. But now you see I've got this really pretty, and you probably can't see how sparkly it is, but it's really sparkly and pretty. And I'm even going to put another layer over top of this. I'm not going to do it right now, but you get the idea. It'll be glossy and pretty when I'm done. And that's pretty much it. The hearts are in there. But we got Mr. Raccoon. I'll probably put another final coat over him. Mr. Raccoon, isn't he cute? And we've got our Russian stacking doll. We've got our snowflake. Oh, we didn't put our... Oh, we need to do our girl. Is it done? Oh, it's time. We need to do one more. One more, one more. Because I know you want to see this all done. Or at least glossified. With the very little bits that I'm getting out of there.
can't forget about her. She's been patiently waiting over there for her chance to shine. And obviously you would further decorate it. Um, however you want to actually. Actually I will um, decorate it. I'll show you what you can do. I forgot. I wanted to show you one other thing. Now this doesn't dome like um, regular resin does, but the, the UV, the resin, the actual resin will, but not so much just the polish. You know what I mean? Because the polish isn't as thick as the resin. So when you get the resin, it will dome. But this, it'll just give a glossy finish. It'll still look like resin. It just doesn't have that doming effect. My hearts are all done. All right, we'll put her in. And I'll probably put one more coat over top of them of just clear, but I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I'll show you a few of them. I'll put another coat that'll make them more, more have an even glossy finish with that, with an extra coat on them. Um, that shouldn't take long to cure. And what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a little flower. I'm going to grab a little flower or two. What do we got color wise? I think we can do a couple pink. Maybe a little pink and a white, maybe. So you can take flowers and add to it. Let's see, is it done? Yeah, so that's one layer, and obviously you can still see all the glitter on the stickle. Stickles looks really nice under it too. Um, and then what you can do is put your second layer on, and because of the fact that this stuff will act like a glue as well, we can put our flowers right into it and cure it, and they will stick without any additional glue. And you could do that with rhinestones and stuff like that. You can put your, your, you just put a dot on if you didn't want to put it over the whole thing. You can just put a little dot of the polish on and then put your rhinestone on and then cure it. And it'll be nice and it's like nothing left in here. Let's see if I could pour some out. It'd be easier than sitting there fussing with that. Nice thick layer on this time. I'm just looking at it and making sure there's no major spots that need to be. And then I could just take my flowers. Oh, I, I, I only need, I'm only going to be able to probably put one of these. Maybe I should lay it like that. Let's see. 
because I don't see me having enough room for two. I'll just do one. Whoops, stuck my finger in it. Move, move, X, Y, X. All right, I'm going to cure it with just this one flower for now. And it'll secure that flower down. Maybe we'll do rhinestones. Maybe we'll throw some rhinestones on it. Where are my rhinestones? Oh boy. Did I lose them? Oh, in here. Close enough because I still haven't cleaned up my mess since last night. Um, let's see. Rhinestone picker dude. Where are you? Kind of the hell stuck. Everything's stuck. Stuck, stuck, stuck. Um, well, that's curing. I need to find my picker. My rhinestone picker dude. Rhinestone picker dude, where are you? Why is it always missing? Every time. And without fail, the damn thing goes missing. I can stick it in the, in the most visible place. There it is. And it'll disappear, oddly enough. All right, so we're going to pick out a few rhinestones. Okay, let's do it this way because otherwise we're going to be here all day. That's red. I don't want red. I don't want that color. I only want like pinks. Or clear. Here's a clear. Here's a pink. That's a pink. I don't want those. I don't want those. I do maybe want that bigger one. All right, so I've got some here. She should be done now. Let's see. Yeah, see, look, I can hold it by the flower. I'm holding it by the flower. That's how stuck that gets on there. It's amazing. Okay, so now if I want to put rhinestones on, you'll take a little dot, a little dot, a little dot, wherever you want the rhinestone. I put three little tiny you can see them little dots up there and I'm just going to take my rhinestone and I'm going to just drop it on there very easy peasy like that and do a couple more rhinestones Another clear one. Perfect. My goodness, that's beautiful. And what's cool is too, I could take the resin and paint it over the flower itself to make the, the flower shiny. I mean, you can do that or you can not do it. It doesn't, it's not going to, it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's not going to make it any stronger on this. It's already stuck on there, but if you wanted to add a little extra whatever, Stick it in, and then I'll cure all that together. And even the bale that I have for it. Oh, somewhere over here. Where is it? There we go. I have the bale. I can adhere that on as well with 
just some gel. Just some gel. And you're dom like, you know how long it takes to do a domino if you do it, you know, you have to let everything dry. Then you got to put the bale on with E6000 and that takes a freaking year and a half to do because you got to mess with the E6000, try to get it to sit straight, you know. Okay, it's done. I might try to put a little more on my flower. On the inside. Come on, give me some, dude. Just slather it in there, make it shinier. sit in there a minute and then we'll put the bale on and we'll be good to go and then all we gotta do is string it or if you want to put like some trim around the side or something some or, or we could put oh i should put two bales on it one on the bottom one on the top because i like to hang um charms from the bottom so i usually like to put two bales do i have a smaller bale i have these are smaller let me use these I want to use gold or silver. Don't think I want to use those right now. I don't want to use those, but do I want to use gold? No, yeah, I'll use silver. That's good. We'll use the little silver ones if I can get them open because they are weird. So we'll get out two of these because these are a little smaller, a little more petite looking. And then to put these on, all we have to do is, that's hard enough, is uh, I'm going to find a way to sit this up. That's better. It'll work. Another one. Let's see. There, perfect. And we're going to put two on. And all I'm going to do is put a dot of glue there, glue, resin, whatever. I'm going to slip my bail on and slip my bail on should stick enough to get it started if not i may have to hold it for a second in there and it's okay luckily it won't hurt your hands or anything whoa yeah this is where one of those handheld lights come in handy i may have to do one at a time so let me wipe this off and just do one at a time so that i can hold it Literally, it was in there a split second and it was curing it already. Uh, it's, it's enough where it's on there now. I just need to cure it a little longer, but I'm going to get this one on there now. Just putting it on and oh, get out of there. If I hold it for a second, it'll cure. Dang it. Stay in place, you jackass. Stop sticking to my effing finger and stay in place. That's all you have to do. Literally. Alright, it's getting now it ain't gonna go nowhere. Okay. I should have done that before I put the flower on. That would have been smart. That's why I'm having issues. Mm. 
and that won't take long and it will cure quickly. I'm even going to flip it on its side and put it in. But that's how fast it'll cure. It'll like literally just put it under for a second. It'll kind of grab it and then you can lay it down so it'll finish curing completely. I'm not the even most evenest of bales, but whatever. They'll work. That's it. And they're on there now. They ain't coming off. See? It's just like if you were to put resin on the plastic. So there is our domino. We have our bales on, we got our domino, our rhinestones are on there, our flowers on there. And now this normally would have taken a long time if you were using resin and E6000 and all that stuff. But how cool is that? So anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long, an hour and a half or so. Um, but I think it's worth it. Great, I dumped my glitter over. Fabulous, exactly what I needed to happen. Ugh. All right, I'm going to have to scoop that up. Anyway, I'll do that in a second. I made a mess. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will give it a try. I hope you will get yourself one of these little machines and make yourself some really cute embellishments and stay tuned for part two where we do molds and all kinds of fun stuff there and make also other little charms and other embellishments because it's going to be awesome so this part two should be on um tuesday night maybe wednesday morning i'll put it up so i look forward to playing with that and uh, I look forward to getting that video to you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you will give it a try. I'll put all the links for everything you need in the description. And yeah, you can give it a try. And don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can get all of my live streams that you won't see publicly on my channel. You get a special invitation to my weekly live streams. I do several a week that are on my Patreon and that are hours and hours long of fun. We do crafts, all kinds of stuff. So you can come hang out with me and a bunch of other ladies and we have a good time. It's private. We don't have trolls coming in. And it's only $1 a month. There's no other fees to it. There's nothing else. It's literally $1 per month. And you're good to go. And you can cancel at any time. So if you want to do it for one month, then you can just go in and, you know, not do it for the next month, whatever. It's up to you. So, but we have a really good time. And yeah, that's where we were playing a lot. And that's where we did a ton. We did like tons upon tons of embellishments last night. So... I advise you to join that because we have a blast. And I also played on my sewing machine on Friday night and we did like some fancy stitching, which, um, let's see, I did, I did these Friday on my Patreon live stream as well. So if you join, you get to see all this stuff that you don't get to see. Normally I made a fabric tag. I made this cool one with skulls, and I made this little card. So anyway, I will see you guys soon. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to look at the links below because there's all kinds of links down there to my Facebook group. There'll be links on where to get all this stuff. There'll be links to Patreon. Oh, and my Zibit store where I sell things dirt cheap. Awesome craft supplies, dirt cheap, like this glitter. I've got tons of stencils and stamps and dyes. And, and I'm, I'm about to put more and more stuff in. So if you, if you don't find something you like right now, I'm about to put Christmas stuff in. So you're going to see all kinds of new stuff going in. So keep looking back at that. Um, I will see you guys later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do. And be nice to people. Bye.